Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Awkward Arms and Armor. It's an immature party game. In Awkward Arms and Armor, it has the same style of a game you would notice that has a judging style game where things happen and you get to choose one of the things and the person who gets the thing wins the points, right? Most of you guys know what these kind of games are. Cards Against Humanity, um, there, there, there's a bunch of them, right? Apples to apples. Uh, but this one here introduces an interesting concept. Now you're back battling against monsters while having a judging aspect in the game. Everybody's going to get three cards, uh, three cards of each type. One is going to be suffix, one is going to be prefix, and then one is going to be weapons. And then they're going to construct uh, a basically a type of weapon. For instance, maybe I would do, oh, uh, I don't know, how about an explosive longbow of burning? Perfect. And then I put that face down, everybody else is going to do the same thing, and you're going to be fighting against monsters. Every turn there's a person who's going to have to deal with a monster, like litter of the drugged ketons. They're going to have a uh, points value and a health value and of course a weakness, and everybody else, every other player is going to have one as well. And you're trying to score points. If you can defeat the, if you get picked, you get points, and then of course the person after getting picked uh, will get to choose which weapon they want to use to fight the, the, the kittens themselves, and they can score points as well, and it's going to go around in a circle. What is also interesting as well is you're going to be using these dice which is involved in combo we'll talk a little bit more more about later as well as uh occasionally you'll be fighting against bosses like a headless hydra and you're all going to fight together and you want to be the mvp and not the lvp least valuable player and the most valuable player it's important uh and you can continue playing the game until a certain amount of points and of course there's some different limitations and changes in the game you can make to make the game difficult or easier or more interesting uh but let's go ahead and show you the contents of the game and then after that we'll show you how to play come back and how to play <laughs> here is the contents for awkward arms and armor you're going to be getting the rule book of course you'll be getting a board as well and and you're going to be getting four separate decks. You have the monster deck here, which is going to have all the different monsters, including the bosses. You're going to have the suffix deck, the prefix deck, and the weapons deck. Along with, you're going to be getting these die. There's six sides to them, and they all have different aspects to them. They're basically going to be weak spots for the players and the monsters. you got the head. you got the... Uh, buttocks, the groin, you've got the shoulders, looks like, the arm, and of course the leg. Uh, there's a big stack of cards for each of these decks, and you'll be using them with a hand just like this one here, and uh, that's what you're going to be getting. All right, let's come up and talk about how to set up the game, as well as how a round uh, goes, and then I'll show you a couple turns. Beginning the game is simple. You're going to be choosing three cards on the top of each of the three decks, like I said previously, and you're then going to also uh, put out a monster from the top of the deck, whether it be a mermaid maid or it be some drugged up kittens. Uh, one player is going to start off and they're going to be the fighting player, and every other player is going to look at their hand and choose one of each of the types of cards in their hand. They're going to put them together and then place them face down so that the player cannot see them. Uh, then they're going to move them around the board without that player looking. The player will then flip them over and then start reading them. Okay, what do we have here? Oh, we have a gentle pussycat of caressing. Wow, I. I just picked these randomly. Um, and then they're going to determine which one they thought was the most funny, right? Or the most amusing, whatever whatever they want. And the person who they found which wasn't be the most amusing is going to get points based on the victory point of the monster, which is right here, three. Uh, on the monster card, you're also going to notice there's a health point and a weakness point. So after they've chosen that, they're going to also then choose a weapon to fight the monster with. And of course, they want to select a... Um, a weapon that has the monster's weak point to it because it's going to give them potential bonuses. So, for instance, maybe instead of the uh, gentle, caressing <laughs> pussycat, maybe I want actually the uh, screaming plate mail of burning. Why? Well, because this one here says how many dice they're going to be able to be rolled, which is six here. And then it has the two weak point bonuses. So the heads get plus one and bodies get plus one. After choosing this one as opposed to the pussycat, then the pussycat's owner is going to gain the points of the monster. I would then take these die. I'm going to go ahead and roll them to fight the monster. Uh, if I do not roll a weakness, the monster's weakness, then it's a fail instantly. If I do, I'm going to add them up as well as any bonuses on the card I would get, and then I'm going to defeat the monster, hopefully, and gain its value in points. If I don't, I lose it, and the next player gets to go. Pretty simple, right? You're going to go around the table just like any other basic uh, get, basic uh, guessing game or judging style game with the added uh, benefit of choosing the weapon you want to fight with. Another little interesting aspect of the game that has been thrown in there is going to be the monster bosses, this one here, where all players are going to be throwing down weapons from their hands and fighting. If your weapon doesn't do any damage, then it's going to give you, a, it can be the uh, LVP, lowest valued player. 
and in which case you're going to lose a point. Uh, but if you actually succeeded in defeating it with the most uh, points or tied for the most, you're going to get the monster's value, uh, which is pretty sweet as well. Of course, there's a weakness on the monster. And you, um, you can, you, you, yeah, that's, that's basically the, the function of it, is a boss fight that you all work together to do. And uh, you set a victory point total. Maybe it's going to be 10, 20, 30, or 40 points. That's up to you. There's also some variations you could choose. For instance, if you wanted to, you could say, oh, let's play with four of each type of card in our hand instead. Or let's play with up to 40 points this game. Whoever gets the highest points, uh, whoever gets the 40 points first wins. Or maybe a certain amount of rounds. Up to you. It doesn't really matter how you want to do it. But the basic idea is uh, choosing along with the judging and then, of course, the fighting aspect based on the weapons that are available to you. All right, let's me take it down below and I'll show you how basically a round of play is going to go and hopefully you can defeat one of these scary monsters and I'll tell you what I think about it. So here is a setup for a three-player game of Awkward Arms and Armor. Obviously in this game, the more players, the better, and you can play up to three to seven. So here we're gonna have three of each different type of cards. I've got the three prefixes, the three weapons, and the three suffixes. And of course, we're gonna choose a player to start the game off. Let's go ahead and take my Mega Man. He'll be the starting player, and so what he's going to do is flip over a monster from the deck, and we'll see what he gets. So he has the Wizard Swordman here. He's got two health, his weakness is arms, and he's got a value of two. So uh, every player that is not the player that is going to be fighting is going to make up their own, uh, who knows, their own their own uh, type of weapon, basically. So we have a Sheep of Invisibility. That sounds fun. How about a Drunken Sheep of Invisibility? So this guy is going to make this item. He's going to hide it face down so that he, nobody else gets to see it, and this player will do the same. And if you're playing with more players, you're just going to add that many players to the game. Ooh, I like that one. That's funny. Oh, okay. There we go. This is an interesting one. And then face down. And then these are going to get shuffled up while this player is not looking. So Mega Man turn around. Perfect. And then after that, they're going to be placed down again. And um, they're going to be flipped over by this player who's going to read them out loud. So for instance, the Drunken Sheep of Invincibility or the limp nuts of poop. <laughs> and which one they're going to want to fight is going to be based on whether or not maybe there is going to be more die here or whether or not there's going to be more uh, weakness bonus points. So they need the arm, but there's no arm here. So the first thing we're going to do is which one is the most funny. So maybe this player thinks that the limp nuts of poop is the most funny, in which case this player would score two points. But then it's going to come down to which one that they want to use to roll. And uh, to fight the fight the wizard swordsman. Unfortunately, there's no uh, yeah, there's no weaknesses here. They give bonuses, and it's only four. There's, they're both four dice, so it doesn't really matter. Maybe he'll just pick the drunken sheep because that'll be fun. And he takes his four die, right? And he's going to need to roll at least one arm even to, not to be successful. He's going to actually need two arms in order for this to work out. He got his one arm, so he doesn't instantly fail. But he doesn't have any bonuses to arms here, so it's only going to do one damage to this guy, which would in turn not allow this guy to be defeated. If he had rolled two arms, that would have defeated this guy, and he would have scored points based on the Wizard Swordsman's um, point total over here. And they would just play it past the next player. Each player is then going to get to take one additional card of each type, just like that. And it would move on to the next player who's going to be fighting the next monster. In which case it'd be the buff wizard. And once again it would continue in the same way. The rest of these cards are just going to go to their uh, respectful discard piles or respective discard piles. And uh, then the next play is going to begin. This player is going to look at his hand and choose something. Maybe he would choose a, uh, <laughs> a magnum bathtub. Uh, or yeah, a magnum bathtub of flogging, which is, I guess, interesting. It'd have to be a wet bathtub or a bath bathrobe. And then maybe a some balls, some trusty balls of, of circumcision. So trusty balls of circumcision. Okay, so then this player is going to decide which one he thinks is more funny. I would think this one is trusty balls of circumcision. So this one's going to go. He's, this player is going to score points based on um, the points here and then this player is gonna get a chance to roll so he gets five die and he needs the buttocks and he has a bonus of plus two to the buttocks so he only needs one buttocks to score this bam he got two that's gonna give him plus two uh, oh sorry plus yeah plus two bonus to buttocks that's four damage uh, and that's four two health right here so we would easily defeat this guy and score him more points and the game is gonna go on like that uh, there is of course like I was talking about boss fights in the game as well as some interesting aspects like uh, negative uh, victory points 
Uh, this is a okay. Now, uh, for instance, let's see here if I can find one. Here's a boss fight with a negative. If you choose a player who has the mo for the most funny, uh, you're going to give them the negative points. <laughs> and uh, when you're fighting together, you're all going to be play playing cards from your hands. The boss's total HP is going to be based on the number of players, like two times the number of players, unless there's more than five, it's just ten then. And uh, of course, there's a weak spot, and if you give them to zero, whoever has the most damaging weapon is going to score four points, and whoever doesn't is going to score negative points. And you play up to a certain point total, and that's the basic idea of the game. Awkward Arms and Armor. All right, let's come up and talk about it. So Awkward Arms and Armor is a judging style game, like most ones in the genre, but it's going to include that combat aspect. So the first thing you go to think about is, do you like judging games? If yes, continue. If no, probably not the game for you. Then it adds the ability to combat the monsters. Now what originally appears to be just luck is actually not because you're going to be able to choose the card after giving points away to your favorite card, you choose the weapon that's going to work best for you to fight the monster. In which case, it could give you less dice, but it can give you bonuses to weak points. It could give you more die and one single weak point or no weak points. All of them could give you just not good stuff and you just go for the best amount of die you possibly can. And of course, it's still chance, right? Because you don't know what you're going to get on the die, but you can you can change that luck ratio based on how how much opportunity you have to succeed in the game. So when you're fighting against something that has a weakness of groins, you know that there's that weapon there because the person chose that weapon, not specifically to help you, but because he thought you would think it was the most funny. So uh, also not only that though, but sometimes players might, if you're in first place, might be trying to give you bad white items, right? And if that happens, you can look for those negative points, right? And try and make somebody take negative points and then choose a weapon that's gonna work best for you. But it's, 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 a, it's a party game, right? It doesn't have a huge amount of strategy to it. It's more just gonna be a social aspect game. You can pretty much play this anywhere. It's gonna be, a, it's gonna be one of those joking style games because a lot of it is raunchy humor, but it's not really because you have to have that kind of mindset for the game to be raunchy, right? Of loving, of castration, of comfort, of discomfort, pinching, sweat, stealth, phlegm, passion, sucking, hypnosis. Uh, so there is a couple like mm, words I'd be careful about using on YouTube: uh, vengeance, fury, rage, saliva, seduction, triumph, running away. Most of them are pretty standard, though. There's a couple of them that are a little, little uh, immature, mature style. You know what I mean? Screaming, bloody, soggy, flaming, uh, perky, greasy, royal, omnidirectional. That's an interesting one. A sweet, sweet, extending, emotional, electric, inconceivable. And of course the weapons too, and all the weapons have their own cartoony uh, aspects to it with the artwork. Um, as for the artwork, I think it all works. It's kind of one of those games where it's it's so joking and cartoony that the cartoony aspect of the artwork is fine with me. It reminds me of like the Ultimate Adventures kind of thing, where it's just like, this this, this trident is definitely not the trident you're going to imagine it being um, after you put the prefix and suffix of, of like stabby poking castration, right? Then you're just like, this is not necessarily the thing, but it has that cartoony aspect, cartoony nature. And the monsters are fun. They're cute. Drug, dr drugged up kittens and stuff like that. Uh, overall, it's a fun little judging game. If you like those kind of games and you want to add an additional fighting aspect, you're going to like this one as well. Um, but does it bring anything huge to the genre? Probably not super much. It does, that mechanism is different, but it is different enough to get uh, along with other judging games. I don't know, that'd be up to you, I suppose. Personally, I did enjoy this game. We had a lot of laughs, a lot of fun, a lot of adding the prefix and suffixes and stuff like that to the cards made it a variety of different, uh, com variety of different uh, phrases and whatnot that you can add to the cards to make it change and be different every single time. So you're very unlikely to play the same type of card more than once. And then of course, all of the monsters, it comes with more than you'll ever need as far as all the monsters goes. And they just add a little bit more com comedic value uh, as well as if you want to be very imaginative, it can be pretty pretty funny and a little gross all at the same time. So that is Awkward Arms and Armor. If you like judging games, it is a high recommendation. It's funny, it's fun, it's light. Go ahead and check out the description below. All right, guys, thanks for watching the Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all does help. We do greatly appreciate it, as well as checking out the game Awkward Arms and Armor. If you like those party style judging games, this one brings a little bit extra with that little additional combat attacking to it. And of course, the prefix and suffixes making it so that every single unique combination will almost never be used more than once, unless there's something really funny. Also, check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, because in the blog post, giveaways, Kickstarter list, and more. And our friends at everythingboardgames.com and the giveaway geek. All right, guys, I'll talk about this time. And I, as always, I look forward to putting together crazy weapons to fight against scary monsters and seeing you at Gen Kind next time. <laughs>